August 17th, I'm showing sure it's uh, 5.30 p.m. Um, once again, may I have a roll call, please, Janelle? Mayor Cookta? Here. Mr. Pozar? Here. Mr. Westbrook? Here. Mr. Engel and Mr. Hopkins are absent. Um, we have four minutes to be approved. I'll go through them one at a time, and the three of us can vote on these. So we'll start with the approval of the September 15, 2014 Planning Commission meeting minutes. Do I have a motion to approve? Checked them all. <laughs> Did you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she all right. Okay. So I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right. Next is approval of the October 20th, 2014 minutes. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Moving on. November 17th, Planning Commission meeting. Minutes. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, then if we, uh, that wouldn't be a bad idea. Let's do the public hearing from that day. Um, do I have a motion to accept the public hearing in? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, now, last is December 15th. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And there's also public hearing. Public hearing that day. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And we're done with the minutes. So we're going to go and start off this evening with the proposed construction of an oversized garage. Want to come forward, please, Rob? All right, uh, Brian, would you please read your review? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> this is a report regarding 9653 North Bedford Road, an oversized detached garage. <clears throat> the applicant's proposing to construct a 30 by 50 uh, 1,500 square foot detached accessory garage on their property located at 9653 North Bedford. The garage will be located uh, to the rear of an existing home, which is owned by the applicant on an adjacent property, also owned by the applicant. Uh, the new garage again will be situated on a parcel, a separate parcel owned by the applicant that is approximately one acre in area, and the main parcel or the parent parcel with the existing home is about five acres in area property zoned residential park, park district and sections 1163.02 H and I of the Planning Zoning Code regulate detached accessory structures. Um, the, re the reason that uh, you had a, a meeting this evening, a public hearing for a conditional zoning certificate is because the code says basically any, any um, detached accessory structure that exceeds 600 square feet in area requires that conditional zoning certificate. <clears throat> and we heard no public come out in opposition of that conditional zoning certificate. Um, so I have a few comments regarding the, the plan and the proposal. Um, it appears that the, based on the, the um, sketch provided with the, uh, the application that the garage is approximately 35 feet to the north property line of the vacant parcel. And if that's accurate, that complies with the code. Um, one, one issue is, uh, and I think the applicant's already been made aware of this, he'll need to submit a scaled site plan um, that documents uh, all the measurements um, precisely. Um, now the only issue that I, I saw uh, with regard to the proposal really of, of interest was the fact that um, the garage is going to be going on a separate parcel owned by the applicant. My suggestion was that, um, that the applicant combine those two parcels. From talking to the uh, assistant building commissioner, um, the applicant is. This has been discussed with the applicant, and he's in agreement of um, uh, complying with that. And that's just a matter of um, working through some county and providing necessary requirements to combine those two parcels. Yeah, I've already contacted some county, and um, my whole intention is, once I knew that this was, I could move forward with it, that I would combine both parcels. 
Um, with regard to the, the setback, uh, the proposed structure appears to be located more than 250 feet from the street, which complies with the code. The only other unknown issue was the height of the, um, the building wall. And again, speaking with the assistant building commissioner, he's confirmed that um, if a particular roof pitch, I think a 412, 412, right. 412 is used, that they'll meet that uh, height requirement in the code. So with that said, um, I recommended uh, approval to the commission subject to the minor comments in my, my report and with the um, submission of a revised site plan to the building department for administrative approval. All right, any questions? Comments from the commissioner? Um, I see Dennis had some comments on that. Yes, he did. Uh, Dennis, could you yeah. please go uh, over? The side of the roof shingle should match the house, which I think we've already talked about. And uh, other than that, with the, <coughs> with the 412 slope instead of 512, as you've shown, you should get under 15 feet to have that limitation. All right. We have some comments from Nick as well. All right, let's hear them. Please provide a site plan that includes the finished floor elevation of the garage, proposed grading, and location of any proposed utilities, including downspout outlet locations. Please note that the garage square footage exceeds the allowable maximum area of 600 square feet for a detached private garage. All right. Any other questions, comments? All right, so we have a list of things, and I think we can go for a condition, conditional approval tonight, provided we do those things. Do you have any problem with that? No, but I did have one question. I, I, I've drawn several plans of this garage, um, and do all my drawings that I turned in, does it say 50 by 30, not 50 by 40? Yeah, 40 by 50. Okay. And on the one floor plan, I think that's. Okay. So I, the 50 is missing. Is, because I was just, when I saw the memorandum saying 50 by 30, 30 by 50. It's a 50 somewhere. I know it did. <laughs> so so that's what I want to ask too. Yeah. I just want to make sure. So that needs to be corrected. Yes, that's in the comments. Yeah, I, I think that's acceptable. Um, the only concern I would have would be the size of the detached structure compared to the home, but I think the home is... 1970. Yeah, I'd say close to 3,000 square feet, so I, I think that's that's fine, that amendment. Um, and actually, the you know, if, you, if you look at my two parcels, my power parcels, um, I, I definitely have plenty of... Um, from my property lines, from yeah. side yeah. yards, so... Because it's gonna, it's actually gonna sit closer to the parcel that our existing house sits on. So, all right. So, what size is it gonna be? Then? Fifty by forty. Okay. Fifty by forty. Then the comment about the roof height may not will not apply. I thought it's using thirty feet for some reason. Okay. So, our the previous times we've had these oversized garages, you grant, you know, you said okay, the height is gonna be. Larger too because it's a larger building. So. Well, the the thing this one has going for it is the there's no it's there. No, I mean you're not going to see it's there. I mean it's a it's a completely wooded lot, and um, it's still going to be the house is back to one. I mean it's going to be 150 feet of forced frontage before I can clear. So. I mean, Basically, clearing for the garage to sit. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna attach into my driveway, going into it. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Um, <clears throat> this issue has come up in the past with building height of accessory structures, and the commission does have authority to, um, to, uh, to allow a, a greater building height, and we've done that. I think just recently, in the last yeah. three or four months, we the commission did approve one. I think all, for all those reasons you're talking about, it's acceptable to allow that amendment, and as long as the commission votes on that height. I just, I'm not sure what the overall actual building height is. 12 foot walls. 
and originally with a 512 pitch, but if I need to work with the building department in regards to pitch, I mean, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that. You know, a lot of it's to accommodate my vehicle is in the garage, and you know, um, when I build the house, the house looks so darn big from the get go, <laughs> and my truck at the time fit. Well, my truck don't fit, and you know, my wife likes her vehicle in the garage, and it trumps me, pretty much trumps me. Yep. So, <laughs> well, uh, as long as he works with you on that, it's yeah, the condition like it, of yeah. the approval. It looks like the height would be about 17 feet to the midpoint if you went with a 412 on the 40 foot. Okay. So All right. There's some kind of a number to work with. Okay. So we have that. Are there any other questions, comments? So we're talking about a condi conditional approval. And then just to clarify, so on um, a scaled site plan, correct, is what Nick, I believe, wanted, mm -hmm. um, with showing the finished floor? Yes. Correct? Okay, and then obviously where the house walls are going to go. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much the only thing that I need to turn back in. And then combine combined the parcels. And, and I'll, I'll yeah. show proof of combining the parcels. So we have about. three conditions. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> uh, the uh, City Recreation Center is requesting to construct a ground monument sign located at 1494 East Aurora Road. The proposed sign area is divided into several elements, and the sign itself is approximately 5.73 feet tall, <clears throat> which does not include the, uh, the symbol. Um, <clears throat> the reason it doesn't include the symbol, there's no measurement provided for the, for the symbol. The Longwood Park portion of the sign is approximately 22.84 square feet. Uh, again, the symbol is not taken into account. Um, and then the included also into the, in the sign is an electronic message center or a dynamic display. This portion of the sign uh, is approximately 18.82 square feet. The figures that I'm providing you, you with are approximate because um, not all the needed measure, measurements are provided on the sign illustration, and the illustration <coughs> itself is is not drawn to a known scale. Um, so it's, I, I basically used a portion of the, the sign to scale these figures off um, to give these approximate measurements. The, the property, I believe, is zoned R1 Residence District. When you look at the zoning map, um, it doesn't necessarily clearly identify the zoning. It refers to the property as Longwood Park um, and doesn't necessarily assign a zoning district, but I believe it's R1. Um, and it's adjacent to all the R1 zoning district. Um, the cons I, I reviewed a conceptual sign illustration in connection with this request and had some comments. Uh, according to section 117903F of the Macedonia Plain Zoning Code, um, it, it permits a freestanding sign in a residential zoning district with a maximum of 20 square feet of sign area. Additionally, 117909 regulates dynamic displays and specifically 117909B1 states that dynamic displays are not permitted in residentially zoned districts in the city. So based on the information contained on the illustration, I have some concerns. Uh, one, uh, if the zoning is residential, which it appears it is, dynamic displays are not permitted. Um, section 117909 requires more stringent standards, specifically lighting and landscaping for dynamic displays located within 100 feet of a residentially zoned parcel. Here's these standards, additional standards may apply. 
Um, the, dynam the amount of the dynamic display in a freestanding sign is limited to 30% of the total sign area, and that's under 1179.09b2. This proposal exceeds the 30% limitation. And the overall area of the sign itself, which includes the dynamic display, exceeds the 20 square foot maximum permitted by code. So, with that said, um, the proposal can't be approved by the commission this evening um, for a number of reasons. Uh, to build the sign as proposed, the, the applicant, the City Recreation Department, will need to seek variances from the Board of Zoning Appeals um, for the additional sign area for the overall sign and the um, dynamic display, and then also first and foremost would need to get a, a variance to allow a dynamic display in a residentially zoned district. All right. Are there any other comments? Um, we have some comments from Dennis. No, that's All right. I think it looks great for a park sign. Yeah. I saw that part. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it does. It does look nice. When I saw it, that's a sign for a park. Exactly. All right. Now, um, as far as for tonight, um, we are up against a very stringent time limit because we have no sign. Our sign is collapsed, it's junk, fell, falling apart. Uh, one of the things that uh, has to happen is conceptually, perhaps we can give some kind of approval tonight, and then Angela, you go to the Board of Zoning Appeals. Um, so let's talk about this a little bit. It's a residential uh, zone area. However, it's our parks. Our parks have people coming from out of town. Angela's expressed to me more than once that people go right past the rec center. They think it's a church or something else. And they don't even know it's our rec center. Um, they're looking for a place where they're supposed to play a game. So I think that uh, it's incumbent upon us to make a sign that would very, very clearly designate what this is. Uh, the second thing is the amount of area, 30% of the total sign area. We're talking about a recreation center that runs a multitude of programs. These programs have, uh, are very important to get information out there because we want our recreation center to remain profitable. You have been doing very well with it. Um, and you're actually handicapped right now. One of the ways that you can draw more people in is by information. So that's my pitch for the planning commissioners. Uh, if you would consider conceptual approval so that we can move forward with this because we are up against a timeline having no side with fall programs coming up, winter programs coming up, and the fact that we have, uh, uh, this is something that's been needed for quite some time. Uh, if there's ever a time to do it, now's the time. And if we're gonna do it, it would be to our benefit to do it right. Um, you have a sign company that has come forth with a proposal. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, we're talking about a price that it's not necessary for it to go out of bids. Correct. All right. So that's the situation, gentlemen. I don't know where you feel on that. If you want to hold back, I can understand that, but I just wanted to make it clear that we have no sign. Mr. Mayor? Yes. The church across the street also has a dynamic. Correct. Yeah, it has right the across the street, they have dynamic. Yeah, yeah. That we approve. And the chances of residential houses being through there are probably slim. <coughs> Absolutely. Hey, we've we've denied them in a residential area before, but that's they were right up against houses. Yes, so the church there on, uh, on Valley View. Valley View, right? right. They want to put a big one up too. And yeah. right people's backyards mm -hmm. versus obviously. It's well, backyard. we're still going to have a sign that will be in compliance with uh, how fast the message change, uh, the brightness, uh, all of those factors will be in there. It's just that, uh, um, number one, it's in a residential area. Well, yeah, but, and then number two, it 
has too much uh, of the actual message center, but what's too much for a recreation facility that has got so many programs, it's almost unreal, so your thoughts. Well, there's only three of us here tonight, so we all have to be either in favor of moving this forward or not. And if you feel that you would like to slow it down, there's not a problem uh, to make sure that we're doing it right. And um, we'll just uh, table it until we hear from uh, the next step, which will be going to the DCA. Um, when you do make an appearance there, let me know so that I can be there that night and we can talk about this as uh, the benefits of this to our city as far as uh, in every aspect from uh, being amenities for the residents plus uh, being profitable uh, because we have such a good program there all of those things need to be um, brought to life and uh, we need to sign that to do that and I agree with it. Come out of there, go to, you'll come back here, come and back then here. nobody can say okay. we're treating the city different. We kind of figured that we were working with uh, Kayla to get a meeting scheduled, so we'll, we'll get that scheduled. And then we have to go to council for approval of money, but we can't go to council until we find out exactly what we can do. Is this uh, replacing, this is going to go about the same spot as the, yes. right there? Yes, that entrance way at the light there. Yeah, we, we have some plans to turn some things there with, uh, uh, to beautify. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just been terrible. Uh, it's almost a, a shame for us. All right. Yeah, so is there, uh, the landscaping was mentioned in there. Is there any plans of, yeah, I don't know if it's going to wipe out all the shrubs that are there now. Um, there were plans discussed with the Park Service staff of adding and redoing the landscaping once this would be installed. Um, and I think there's a, a local company in town that helps contribute to that as well, and they'd like to sponsor that, so. And we can always talk to the Women's Flower Club and see if we can get any freebies. Yeah. All right, so that's where you stand. You okay. need to go the next step, but uh, at least now we've got the ball rolling. Right. All right? All right, thank you all very much. All right. See ya. All right, next is a uh, proposed signage for Phil's Auto and Truck Center. Hello. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> the applicant's proposing to erect a two and a half by eight foot or 20 square foot ground monument sign uh, located at 576 East Highland. The property is zoned limited industrial district. I reviewed a sign application, including a sign rendering dated July 27, 2015, and have some comments for the commission to consider. Uh, regarding compliance, uh, a compliance review of section 117907B. Um, I found that that section of the code does allow up to a 40 square foot ground sign, which this sign um, complies with the area limitations, but um, some other concerns do exist. Uh, first, there's at least one other existing ground sign, I think two other ground signs on the subject property, and section 1179 
only permits one ground sign per parcel. Um, moreover, subsection E requires that the property owner uh, actually determine which businesses um, can advertise on a single ground sign on a property. Um, two, the sign appears to be painted onto a sheet of plywood and attached to a four, attached to four by four posts. Uh, typically, the commission has required um, signs to be uh, constructed of durable materials and situated in some sort of some sort of a landscape island with a, some type of a, a base, whether it's a brick base or a block type base, um, with again with some landscaping. And then the sign itself appears to be set back 18 feet, um, but the, the plan, the site plan doesn't, it's not to scale and doesn't provide a unit of measurement, so it's undeterminable if that, if it's actually set back 18 feet. Um, <clears throat> so again, the, the plan zoning code only, only allows one sign per parcel and requires a property owner to determine who gets to advertise in a multi-tenant facility on a single sign. Um, the applicant, in my opinion, the applicant should discuss this matter with the property owner and determine if a new ground sign can be constructed for the entire multi-tenant facility. If that's not possible, then the applicant can um, make application to the Board of Zoning Appeals and seek a variance to permit that additional ground monument sign on, on the property. Um, if, if the property owner elects to construct a new monument sign to address all the tenant's needs, then um, I suggest consideration be given to some type, of, again, of a decorative sign base with the additional of flowers or other landscaping to increase the aesthetics of the proposal. Are there any other comments? No. All right, commissioners.
Mr. Mayor, what you gave me <clears throat> is just in, it's in the, um, the uh, requirement section of the sign area measurement and basic regulations of the, the sign code. And basically what that says is if you have a multi-tenant facility, it explains how, um, how a measurement is taken for a multi-tenant facility. One option for the applicant they, um, they he could consider that would likely not require variance. He could look at a wall sign for his unit um, because a multi-tenant facility, you can have a wall sign for each of your tenant spaces as long as it doesn't exceed the overall area for the, the entire facility, which they have a lot of building frontage. I think it's like over 200 feet of building frontage. Yeah, so that complex is entitled to a lot of sign area for wall signage. Um, that would be an, an instant remedy for the applicant to consider is putting a wall sign up for his unit and then maybe tackle the ground monument sign um, as his time permits yeah. with the owner. This might even be superseded by our sign ordinance. I mean, I don't know how old it says. Yeah, I think, is that, is that section 117903 that says? Yeah. Yeah, and if that's, I think that's the same language. It's just, it's just talking about how to measure Okay. Um, but they, whenever they widen the road, he told me, wait, I'm not sure when that was, it was 30 years ago. For <laughs> he told me when they measured that, that's where they made him move the signs back. That was uh, a few years, years ago. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> sure. And also, since uh, that time, we had a new sign ordinance come into being. All right. That's a lot of work and a lot of time and effort was put into. Your sign's very, very important to you. I know that, all right. Now, what we gotta do is try and work with you to see if we can come up with something. Why don't you take a look if you could mount it on the building? That would save you all kinds of trouble. Right, right. I, you wouldn't have to worry about base, you wouldn't have to worry about lighting it. Right. You could get by right. with that, and you might even be able to have a sign that's substantially larger, or do you think it would be the same? Uh, I just. Do you know how big your your unit, how much tenant space you have? Frontage wise. Frontage. Uh, I, I can't. Yeah, <laughs> I don't nervous, but, um, yeah. Well, I mean, I, most, I'm like over a couple hundred feet wide. Interior wide. And it sounds. I mean, we'd have to get his um, frontage requirements, and it sounds like that. That was that sign was designed by somebody in terms of the the sign itself. It was yeah. fabricated already. Yeah, it's by American Signs. So American Signs could give him a sign plan like we you know commonly get, and that would provide dimensions and such. And that's what you would you could submit that back for your wall sign to get that approved. There you go. And you don't have to worry about multi-tenant. Yeah, but you know, I think I would you know I would lose the drive by traffic. short term get the get the wall sign in the long term work with the building owner to try and get him to modify his requirement <laughs> sign to get even if it's below the bottom it says you know Bill's Auto and Truck Center across right. the bottom of the existing sign add on to that to get on there and try and get on to that sign if it's still if that sign is within you know a little more that work but that's gonna take a little more effort and I'm sure the landlord jobs it takes time yeah, it, it takes time to hold these yeah. Right. <laughs> to do that. Um, well, how about for today? Um, I think what we're looking at today is we're going to table film, give you a little more time. Uh, maybe by the next meeting, next month, you can come up with something working with the landlord <coughs> or talk to your sign people about what you can do as far as the sign on the building. And uh, we can maybe uh, uh, come to something so that you can get some more business in. All right, appreciate it. All right, we have to make a motion. Put motion on the table. So we have a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It was nice meeting you, Phil. Good luck. Thanks. All right. So I will hear from you about the next meeting. Yeah, you can contact him with the date. Mm -hmm. And then you can be ready for that table. Okay. Every day. Um, you too. All right. Next.
Next is proposed signage for Pathways Hospice. Good Hi, guys. How are you doing? Great, how are you? Good. How are you, Darrell? I'm Darrell Miller, yes. All right. All right, we have some comments for you, Darrell. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> this is regarding uh, Pathways Hospice Brown Sign, located at 913 East Aurora Road. Um, I reviewed this uh, sign application, including an illustration dated July 30th. Have some comments for the commission. Uh, I will say that um, from speaking to the Assistant Building Commissioner, um, it wasn't clear on the the sign illustration, but this apparently is an existing sign. You're just refacing it. So presumably the sign meets the other criteria for setbacks and things. Um, so with that said, the, the sign itself is two and a half by 8.33 feet or 20.82 square feet. Again, it's a replacement sign um, regarding compliance with section 1179.07b, um, the code allows a 40 square foot ground sign. So this sign um, definitely complies with the area limitations. Um, Again, just this, the sign, the illustration itself is more of a, a picture. And so what I suggested to the uh, system building commissioner is that if the planning commission concurs, they could approve this, particularly given the fact that it is an existing sign, it's just a reface, but approve it subject to a final compliance review by the building department um, and have a, um, a site plan, a scaled site plan provided, just documenting the existing condition. So it goes in the the address file for the property and 20 years from now when the next person comes in they'll know what what was uh, actually done in this proposal and have some base information to work from. Okay, I brought the size um, layout of the Google Maps sign with the existing sign and then a couple other pictures too if that helps. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Start out by saying that the landscape plan is a, is a very nice landscape plan. Um, well done. I have minor comments to the, to the plan. I had done a cursory review, um, marking it up, and just some of these comments are, are new to what I had initially uh, um, opined on. <clears throat> so, uh, again, I did review the landscape plan dated July 25th with a revision date of July 29th, 2015. I have some comments. Um, the code requires, section 1172.02 of the code requires the site maintain an appropriate mixture of deciduous and non-deciduous trees. Um, to accomplish this, I think the applicant's done a nice job providing a um, various amount of pines and hardwood trees throughout the site, specifically 17 evergreens, predominantly con-color firs, which was a suggestion. I know the, the city arborist um, prefers a con-color fir. Um, you know, they're, they're a very nice tree. They take a long time to grow, but <laughs> they're a very nice tree. Uh, so those were replaced on the plan and near, nearly 60 deciduous trees um, are being proposed. Also, um, a nice mix of uh, deciduous and evergreen shrubs are also being proposed on the plan. Um, there is a small waterfall feature um, at proposed at the main entrance to the site. I just felt the information about that 
electrical and other pertinent information should be provided on a plan um, for the city to review. That could be, in my opinion, could be done through the building department for administrative compliance. Um, it's more the technical standards of the, the, the waterfall. I think the, the waterfall itself is a nice feature to enter into the site. Um, the celebration maples, um, I think this is something I had suggested along um, uh, Girl Scout Way. Celebration maples are a very nice tree. Um, they're a great street tree, fairly salt tolerant. Um, they have a long life to them, so, and they're a nice hardwood. So I suggested that and the applicant um, had listed those as being a tree that they found acceptable for the along the street. Um, additional comment that, that I had that um, the applicant hadn't seen previously along South Bedford, I just suggested in between the deciduous trees that some additional flowers and low-lying shrubs be planted um, just to further screen the, the, um, the facility from the main road and add some more aesthetics along, um, along South Bedford. I saw some nodding, so it doesn't sound like that's a significant issue. Um, and then uh, I didn't find any information about the trash enclosure. It, it could be, it's proposed to be screened by a Hollywood um, juniper, which is fine. Any tall juniper I think is fine. Um, I just didn't know if that had already been submitted to the city in a previous. Yeah, it was part of the original plan. Was okay. To match the building. Good. Yeah. Okay. And that, so that's fine. I just thought if there were if we didn't have the information yet that the city should have that information and then um, same thing there the plan does depict a, a small section of fence area but there's no um, information provided on this particular plan on the landscape plan I don't know if it I think it's just a landscape fence feature and not necessarily enclosing anything um, if it wasn't on the original plans then yeah then building drawings was it okay that went through planning commission so okay. I believe it was already approved um, we're probably so far along with the project that, that it may already be up so and same with the waterfall feature <clears throat> that was on the original building plans and we've already run the electrical out there so it's, it's ready to go I think they're just determining which which one they want to put out there okay and yeah we can give you some additional if it was uh, again just a suggestion I, I noted it on here in the plan review if it was already contained on the approved building the actual building drawings that the building department reviews yeah. then that's that's acceptable I, I think unless the assistant building commissioner feels differently um, other than that um, you know I think the plan again is, is a nice um, example of a landscape plan and just with some suggested minor changes, I think it could be approved by the commission. Thank you, Brian. Commissioner? I'll yeah. tell you what, I just keep getting amazed by this place. It's so beautiful. What an asset to our community. It really is such a good job. Um, what you put you know, there's a lot in here. I'm, I'm kind of glad you're doing that. I mean, it's a big building. But it needs a lot to go it with does. it, but it, uh, I think it's in excess of $100,000 in the Just like I put in my house. Yeah, yeah, right. We did it right.
and they allow you to move in administratively to people, and then you sit and wait. They want sort of evidence that everything's going well, flowing well. So somewhere around the time we accept those first two people, uh, as a system person's new law in Ohio that requires them to come out within 30 days, they used to sit for like 90 days. And you'd be open, spending tons of money running the place to all the staff for three months and not having anybody but two people in there. Now we hopefully in 30 days we'll be able to be able to make some of the late days. But, but somewhere in that October 1st to November 1st time frame, we'll do a, a, a ribbon cutting and, and welcome everybody. Oh, well, that's fantastic. Thank you again. Thank you, Harry.